Ematur of Southern Trust, thank you so much for your time there. African Utility Week and Power in Daba started in Durban, South Africa yesterday. Conference Director Claire Vulcan and African Utility Week has become an annual institution where the power industry gets together to connect, network and learn from each other's experiences. We were fortunate to get Joseph Wilson of Symbian Power into the studio to share his experience in keeping the lights on in Africa and building up new infrastructure. Symbian Power has interests in power industries around the world including Iraq, Afghanistan, the UK, USA, Africa and the Middle East. Well, I asked him about the current situation in Niger. The last time I was in Niger was actually during the transition from the last coup back to uh, President Tanja. So I met President Tanja when he was first inaugurated. My sense of this, and in fact American law, is that if there is a military coup that replaces the civilian government, then all foreign assistance from the United States is cut off to that country completely. Now Niger is such a poor country that it will find it very, very difficult, as it did in the past, to survive without American assistance. So there's already that natural pressure on the coup leaders. Uh, the European Union has the same policies, although I'm not sure it's enshrined in their laws or their legal code. Uh, so I would suspect that um, there is being and will be international pressure brought to bear. I was um, pleased to read and to hear that the coup leaders have made a commitment to restore democracy to the country, restore civilian government. I think one of the things that led up to this was the increasingly dysfunctional nature of the Tanja government and the suspension of the Constitution and the willingness of the President to stay in office or the desire of the President to stay in office beyond the date of his mandate. Well, you met uh, President Tanja personally. What do you make of him? Well, at that time, he, he, was, he was quite popular um, because he was replacing uh, a military uh, government. Um, and, um, and the military government had also, in, in and of itself, become somewhat dysfunctional. Um, so um, the whole process generated a lot of excitement of restoring democracy to the country. Uh, but he was clearly a respected elder figure at that time. Uh, he clearly had the support of the population. He'd won in an election. Uh, the political and moral authority was there. His, his uh, predecessor, Colonel Wanke, um, had... Um, had understood his obligations to restore the country to democracy and, and not only did he facilitate the transition during that period that he was the head of the junta but afterwards he actually left the country to permit Tanja and, Tan and the new democracy to seat itself and get some, get, some, uh, get some security, get some comfort a comfort level being back in power. Well, while we're on the subject about foreign service you were based in Iraq as well are you still involved in the politics there? My company, Symbian Power Company, uh, does a lot of business in Iraq. We have succeeded in building 10 uh, power generation and distribution transmission projects, including uh, transmission lines across Al Anwar province during the height of the Civil War, and including building two substations in Sadr City, um, the this, this sort of the Shia part of Baghdad, uh, during the violence there. In fact, our, our substation project was delayed because the U.S. military was running operations in Sadr City and they were using our, our, our substations as uh, basically their forts, their base, their operating base. What lessons can Africa learn from your experience in Iraq? Well, one of the reasons we're bringing Symbian to Africa is we think that they're, the business model that we've employed is directly relevant to what Africa needs and uh, that we can be competitive using it here. Uh, our particular strength is that we can operate in very difficult environments. In fact, for us, coming back to Africa would be like going on vacation because the problems here are nothing compared to the problems of, uh, of Iraq or of Afghanistan where we've operated. So we're very much looking forward to coming here. Uh, but our business model is, and our corporate philosophy is based on, on training nationals to do the work. So we will not bring in a lot of foreign employees. One of the first things we will do, and we're doing it in Tanzania right now, is we will build a training center and we will train all of our staff. They will all be drawn from Tanzanian villages along where we're going to be um, putting the lines. Uh, we will, our security requirements will be handled by local, um, uh, local companies. We will partner with local companies. In the case of Iraq, we trained and certified uh, over 3,000 linesmen, people who can actually build the towers and, and pull the transmission lines from tower to tower. And we also partnered with a local company. And at the end of our three or four year partnership, that local company, we had helped develop the, the organizational skills and the management skills of that company so that it operates now 
not as a partner of ours, but as a competitor. So that is a real success story, and that's what we would like to see here in Africa. Well, as much as you say it is very easy to do, uh, to fix the power story in Africa, w what are the main challenges that you think you could possibly face? I think our biggest challenge right now is the competition, which comes from um, places like India, like China, where they are prepared to do the job at prices that we just can't do it for.